what's going on guys it's been a while it's been a while hey it's been a really really crazy week so i'm extending your option to get in the corporate papers to sunday 12 p.m pacific time because uh, it's been a busy busy week so this is what i'm getting ready to talk to this is kill switch chronicles number 15. so it's been a very interesting week I, since I've installed the majority of the GPS kill switches in them, I haven't had to use them that much. I got kind of a little spoiled, right? Then Tuesday, I woke up and I had 10 people late, 10. And I have a lot of Uber drivers. I have a lot of Lyft drivers. And what I'm, I'm beginning to see is the stimulus economy that lifted up the regular Uber driver is gone. Only my hardcore Uber and Lyft drivers and DoorDash people, they still killing it because they have a work ethic. But I woke up and I was like, I had 24 cars rented out. 10 people had entered into the danger zone. The danger zone, which is 24 hours late because essentially since I haven't had this problem, I haven't really been checking that much, right? I just get my daily deposit and pay my credit card. And I look in there. So I start flipping off, cutting off cars, cutting off cars. And I start getting phone calls. It's like, hey, you know, what's going on with the car? And, you know, oh my goodness, went out the window. It's like, look, I cut the car off because you're not paying me. And what my experience has been is if you don't pay me, y'all typically fuck up my cars. Oh, oh man, my bad, my bad. Let me make a payment right now. So five of them paid up immediately I was like okay maybe this isn't that bad and then um, the other five slowly started to pay but they only paid one day so I wake up this morning 10 late people again and what I have discovered and what I found out that when they're habitually late if you don't stay on them they're gonna get later and later and later and later. So I just cut cars off and one person I had to talk to, I just went ahead and got the car. Now my assistant, she's off this week. So I had to take a lift all the way across town. Cost me $32. And this is one of the things about the GPS thing. It, it actually will pinpoint where the car is, but what it will do is give you the closest um, GPS address it can find. So the address was over here, but the car was over here. So I'm with this Lyft driver and she's driving around and she's getting frustrated because I'm trying to find the car. And I told her I'm trying to find the car. Then she just, she, she snapped, she snapped on me. She's like, I got another drive. I'm like, I just gave you a $32 ride. That ain't normal for you. But I was like, you know what? That's fine. Just put me out. So she put me out. So for, you know, I had my little go bag, right? I had my uh, laptop to turn the car back on. So I went ahead and I walked around the complex and then I found a little bench and I pulled out my stuff and I saw where the car was. And fortunately for me, there was a lake and the car was at the corner of the lake. And I started looking. It was an apartment complex here. There was one here, there was one there. So I started walking, big mistake, because I started walking the wrong way. And I started walking and I noticed that this apartment complex that I needed to get to, I couldn't get there from this side because there was no way to like cross over. There was a fence, there were, I was like, okay. So I had to walk all way back around get on the main road get into the complex and once again the gps stuff is pinpoint so i kept looking and i saw the lake and i started walking and i had to go down the hill then i had to go across someone's yard it was like crazy and then i get to the corner and i see the hood of the car and as i walk around the corner i see the whole car yes so I go ahead to the car. The key is inside the car because he thought that the starter had went out. He didn't know that I cut it off, nor did I inform him. So I went ahead and turned it back on, 
started it up, he was in the car, drove back. And what I'm beginning to see, because I'm having a lot of people late, a lot of people late. So the economy is resetting back to normal and is catching a lot of folks who got used to this easy money, is catching them off guard. And they're struggling. Now, once again, my hardcore Uber, hardcore Lyft drivers, they okay, because they're out there. They're working eight, 12 hours a day. They, they, they know what they gotta do. But my occasional people, this is one of the things, and um, I gotta tighten up on my cutoff you know, policy, because uh, I'll have a few people go two days before I cut the car off, and I gotta get back to 12 hours. I gotta get back to 12 hours. And um, this weekend, I got a friend who's gonna help me and I'm gonna just turn off the rest of these cars and go pick them up. Because here's the thing with hire cars. There is a contingency of hire car drivers who are good, who will work, who will pay you. So I got to remove my property from the folks who are not paying me. Oh yeah, and also, I got another police story that's coming, that's brewing. I have to file another police car. This is the Range Rover. The guy lost the key, so he lost the key. Fortunately, it's on the premium protection plan because I have a feeling that it's going to come back jacked up. I just have a feeling. And on that, I got paid for the Acura. The Acura, you know, let, let me tell you what happened with the Acura. I had to take it to Pet Boys to get tires. I had to take it to Braxton Automotive to get the tune-up. I had to take it to Classic Collisions to get the glass put in. Then I had to take it to Monte Key to have the muffler issue fixed. And now it's ready to rock again. So that car, I spent $3,000 getting it fixed. And I'm getting a check for about $1,200. So that's going to mitigate some of that. So that car is still in the plus column because I'm getting that check. And also... Uh, we're starting to, at the beginning of the week, I had two cars in the body shop and I had three cars in the automobile shop and all those cars are out. So we will see what will happen this weekend, but it's slowing down. The economy is slowing down and I'm in a position where I am glad that I am not buying any more cars because now... You know, I'm going to do a whole video talking about how much I spent, the breakdown, the cost analysis. But, man, it has been a crazy, crazy week. And also, I see, because my first thought to go get the car was to drive one of my cars to find the car. Because I know the GPS, the address it gives you can be inaccurate. But where it is, is 100% spot on where the car is. And I started to drive my car, and that was my first thought. Because once I actually know where the car is, then I can Uber back to pick up my car, right? I kind of wish I did that, because I walked around an apartment complex damn near close to an hour looking for the car. And this is one of the frustrating parts about dealing with people who will be late. Because, like I said, I, I'm getting ready. I had another guy who, he, he was... 23 hours late, and th this is another thing. They want mechanically perfect, perfect cars, super cheap, super cheap. And I'm just sitting there like, so this guy was asking for refunds and stuff, and the car was in for a brake job. This car is made like 4,000, close to 5,000. The brake job was like 1,200, like 1140. So we're still in the plus, car, plus column with that car, and now it needs an alignment. And I, I'm starting to see a close correlation. The people who pay don't mess up your cars. The people who get late, like, I got an issue with tires. Like, let me tell you about what happens with tires. A lot of people want me to bear the cost of fixing up the tires. I was like, when you have a flat, car, a flat tire in your car, you call your insurance company? No, you go get that flat fixed. So uh, that, that's one of the arguments. And always the flats are on the BMWs. I don't have flat tires on the Camry. I don't have flat tires on the Acras. It's always the BMW, and those tires are super expensive. And I'm beginning to see a correlation because, once again, you know, I feel I was talking to my high car rep, 
I'm going to start cutting the cars off at 12 hours. I'm going to have to really tighten that up because fortunately, because I have, I've got 31 cars. I've got GPS kill switches on 25. So the majority of my fleet is protected because uh, tomorrow I'm probably going to have to go get another car and I'm just going to go ahead because the thing is, they're always way out in East Booga Booga. They're like way out. They're never like 15 minutes or, no, they're always in like Stone Mountain, Lithonia, uh, Stockbridge, Jonesboro, Riverdale. That's every time. And once again, I'm beginning to ask people like, where do you live? Because that is a big predictor if they're going to become a yard bird. That is a huge predictor if they're going to become a yard bird because I have the same issues in the same neighborhoods and the same zip codes over and over and over. And like I said, uh, today I got one car. Tomorrow I'm probably going to have to get three. And Sunday I'm probably going to have to get three more. But I'm also renting out cars too. But and it, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating because, you know, going to get my cars back is when you got to spend two to three hours to retrieve your property, that's annoying. That's pain in the butt because they will not bring the cars back. They will not bring them back. I don't know what it up is up with these people, but they will not bring the cars back. They just won't. So I'm getting ready to tighten it up because we're at a point where the repairs are starting to slow way down. I remember at one point I had 14 cars in the shop, 14. And you know, the thing is the, in the beginning, it was routine, you know, it was like water pumps, it was brakes, it was uh, normal maintenance, but over half of my repair costs have come from people messing up my cars. And this is why I got to start tightening up on my retrieval policy because when I hire someone, it's like, they're gonna be the hit squad. It's like, this is how you turn the car off. This is how you turn it back off. I'm gonna have to get them a laptop and you know how to use their phone where they can turn this stuff on and off. Because I see this as a going, going problem. I don't see this getting any better. I, I see this as like, once I slide my car in the hands of responsible long-term renters, yeah. But right now, the occasional renters, the people who are not really working it, the people who are not going hard, uh, that's where my problems are. I got a girl who's had the Range Rover. She's almost a 7,000. Uh, I got another guy who's got uh, a Camry. He's probably at 4,000. So once again, if everybody wants to buy the cars from me and they want to buy the cars at a discount, and I'm just like, look, I just bought this car. If I turn around and sold it to you for like maybe a thousand dollar profit, that ain't really exciting. That's not exciting at all. So yeah, I am turning off cars left and right. So in the morning, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna see who's in the danger zone and I'm just gonna turn the car off. Uh, I had one kid situation where I turned the car off and the guy pleaded and begged and he actually paid me. They, they scratched up the money somewhere. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have to turn it off again because they're entering in the danger zone. And this is one of the things that's a big hassle is to manage all this and manage the communication and communicate what they need to do and what their responsibilities are. It is, um, it's insane, man. It's, it's nuts. It is insane what's going on. So yeah, the kill switch story is about to come back. I'm probably going to have a story next week about the Range Rover. I just have a feeling it's going to come back trash. I just have a feeling it's going to come back messed up. I don't know why. And I got one more GPS kill switch in the trunk of the Mercedes. And as soon as I get that back, if it's in condition where I can rent it out, I'm going to throw a kill switch in it and I'm going to keep it moving. But man, these five months have been interesting. They have been interesting. Because once again, I've had people who got late on the, the Camry and got late on the Acura and it's like, hey, I just, they just brought it back. These BMWs, they don't want to let loose. They don't want to let loose. They don't want to play home. I don't know if they telling people that they own these cars. I don't know what's up. 
and right now uh, I'm working on utilization. I'm probably not going to buy any more cars for the rest of the year. And I'm going to work on utilization. I'm going to work on my policies. I'm going to work on my retrieval policy. Uh, once again, my assistant, she was off this week. And, you know, she kind of likes going to get the cars. <laughs> it's like, it just blows her mind. But once again, man, this is real interesting. And this is going to be a, a very intriguing month because one of the things that I'm doing is I'm moving and I am selling stuff left and right. I've sold a lot of the weights in the gym. I'm trying to sell this treadmill. And people are asking me, do I have proof of purchase for this treadmill? Like I'm trying to sell a hot treadmill. Uh, I don't, I don't have proof of purchase that. I got a video of when they brought it in. I recorded that. Does that help you? I didn't hear from him. So we got two weeks to move the treadmill, the sofa set, and the bedroom set. And the bedroom, the, the bedroom set, I can literally sell it. I bought that 12 years ago. I can sell it for 300 bucks, and I'm, I'm good. I'm good because I got plenty of use out of that bedroom set. Plenty. And the leather living room set, bought that 12 years ago, so I can let that go cheap. And because um, I want it to the point where everything that I have fits into my new place. And I'm almost there. I'm almost there because, um, you know, I've got a lot of stuff cleaned out in the basement. I moved stuff to the office, so we're good to go. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you what we're going to do. We're going to be cooking with gas this month in the corporate papers and uh ah, it's getting dark so i'm about to wrap this up but once again i'm extending the deadline to the corporate papers because i've been managing car stuff and i've got all kinds of stuff that we're going to do this month so go ahead get in the corporate papers and i will see you this sunday at 5 p.m because we have a live training and I'm going to work on that tomorrow in between being a repo man, being a repo man. It, it's wild, man. It's wild. So we're going to be doing that. But go below, get the corporate papers, and I will see you guys in the next one. Man, it got dark quick. <laughs> it got dark quick. Ain't that late. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next one.